So in this video, we're going to go over vector dilation or contraction. <clears throat> so the basic idea is if we take a vector, a transformation, and we apply that transformation here to a vector in R2. It's a two component vector and I map it over to a two component vector. So I have a map from R2 to R2 or a transformation from R2 to R2 where we take and multiply the vector input by a positive scalar. So we want R to be a positive scalar or in other words an element of R positive. So positive real numbers. Um, if R is a number that's bigger than 1, we get a dilation. The vector becomes R times longer than it was initially, or it stretches. And if R is less than 1, we get a contraction. So like if R is equal to a half, the vector points in the same direction that it was pointing in, but it uh, contracts to half of its size. But what's, what we want to note, though, is that this type of transformation, if we are applying, say we apply the transformation to a vector xy, and we multiply the vector xy by the scalar r, the r just distributes into the vector. So you wind up getting the transformed vector or the image rx and ry. Those are what your components are. And what we want to notice is that we could accomplish this same task of multiplying r times a vector using a matrix transformation. So here I have a matrix that has r, 0, 0, r. And what we want to notice is if we do multiplication, we have a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 1. We're going to get a 2 by 1. We get r times x doing the dot product. So we're going to wind up with r times x plus 0 times y because it's first row dotted with the first column. So we get 0 times y and we get 0 times x plus r times y. And when we simplify this, we just get rx, ry, the same thing that we would have gotten had we just distributed r directly into the vector. The reason why we want to be able to represent these things even though here it looks much simpler to do it this way but the reason we want to be able to represent transformations in a matrix format is so that we can do transformation compositions which we're going to talk about more in a in a, a video down the road but the idea is is what if you wanted to do multiple transformations to a vector well, and so let's say you had transformation 3, transformation 2, transformation 1, where each of these transformations is represented by a matrix. Well, then you can just take the product of the transformations. I could say transformation 3 times transformation 2 times transformation 1 times the vector I want to transform. And when we take the product of these three transformations, we wind up with a single matrix that does all three transformations at the same time. So we're going to frequently want to come up with a matrix representation for a transformation. So in this case, this matrix uh, either dilates or contracts, depending on the value of R, vectors from R2, uh, sending them from R2 to R2. Uh, we want to also notice that we could factor the R off of this transformation vector. We wind up with the 2 by 2 identity matrix here. Uh, the columns of this matrix actually form a basis for two-dimensional space, which we haven't talked about yet, but we will in the future. And what we want to notice is that this idea would extend into higher dimensions. So for example, if I wanted to take and uh, dilate or contract a vector in R3 by multiplying that vector in R3 by a positive scalar R, we could also represent that in analogous to how we did it in R2, we could say, hey, we, j we can multiply you by a vector, sorry, by a matrix that has R's on the diagonal, X, Y, Z. So if we just had R, 0, 0, 0, R, 0, 0, 0, R, this would be a contraction or dilation by a factor R uh, to a vector in R3. And, and this would extend to Rn, it would be the same idea. You would just have an n by n uh, diagonal matrix with, with your scaling factor R on the diagonal. When we put it in matrix form, 
it's nice because if we're working in GeoGebra, we can put these transformation matrices into GeoGebra. So here I have a vector U52. This matrix right here, T sub 1, would make the vector U three times longer. It's a common practice uh, when you transform something to use prime, the uh, prime notation. So if I do U prime, I would say, hey, I am transforming vector U, or vector U is becoming U prime. So one way we could transform U would be to multiply it by T sub one. So I, uh, the subscript here, you use a, uh, the underscore to, to, to denote that. So I could go T sub one times U, and that will give me immediately a vector that's three times longer, and I denote that vector by U prime. U prime is the image of U under the transformation T sub one. And what we were indicating earlier is we can actually uh, compose these transformations if we want to. So here I have a vector, uh, T, uh, a matrix T sub one that makes things or dilates things to three times larger, dilates vectors. Here I have a, a matrix T sub two that makes vectors half as long as they were before. So we could actually uh, compose these. I could say T sub two times T sub one times vector u and let's call him u prime again that'll make a new u prime and hit enter and we've now transformed the vector u by first making it three times larger than it was and then having the values so we wind up with a vector that's three halves the size of the original vector so putting them in the matrix format lets you uh, compose or do multiple transformations at the same time. So anyways, dilation, you are uh, increasing the size of the vector but not changing the direction. Dilation, uh, con sorry, contraction, you are decreasing the length of the vector but not changing the direction in which it points. So that's the key with the, with, when we multiply by a positive scalar, we either making the vector larger or smaller than it originally was unless r is equal to one and then we would just be maintaining the size of the vector. It'd be equivalent to multiplying by the identity matrix.